Jude Palmer, Dave here. I am continuing on the project I started yesterday. Uh, that project, to remind you, is to... Hold on, this thing is not cooperating. There we go. Uh, I'm going to make a tabletop. Uh, this is a 16 inch by 16 inch mold I put together with a uh, 3 quarter inch uh, particle board covered with, uh, with melamine. Um, and then all of the joints are sealed with uh, silicone. Um, in addition to this being uh, a good tabletop size, this will also be a good size for, uh, for making tiles and things that might be for building purposes since 16 inches is a pretty common dimension for construction. Uh, so that's the mold. And then over here, we have the mix. So go over what I have on the bench. In this container, in fact, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. In this container, I have my homemade metakaolin. So this is a uh, kaolin clay uh, calcined to 750 degrees Celsius. And I have a total of 717 grams of metakaolin. That will be 40% of the binder mix. Next to it, I have uh, the silicate mix. Now this is uh, roughly 50 to 50 uh, mix of potassium silicate and sodium silicate. And that represents 60% of the binder mix. Um, and so that is uh, approximately 1,700, I'm sorry, 1,076 grams. Then in these containers here, I have the decomposed granite. Oh, this one too. And I've measured it out into these four containers uh, because what I have found is that um, you have to kind of adjust to the binder. If you just start with some flat measurement, um, and you're not exactly sure because you haven't worked it out ahead of time uh, through experimentation like this, whether or not that amount of, of aggregate is going to work with the corresponding amount of binder, you can find yourself starved of the binder. That's happened to me a few times. And once you have that, you either have to like quickly mix up another set a binder if you can, or your mix is probably just not going to work very well um, if it's too dry. So what I have here is, um, uh, and, and I should state that I'm following the percentages that Geopolymer International sends out with their kits, uh, and their kit calls for, uh, in fact, let me go and get this piece of paper here that has their kit, sorry, this is, I'll cut this out in the final bit. Should have had that there. So this, this is the, these are the set of instructions that Geopolymer International sends with their kits. And so you can see that it calls for approximately one to three times the weight of the binder, depending on the particle sizes and the viscosity. And since this is decomposed granite, there's some really small particle sizes in there as well, uh, which I think should be fine. So what I'm going to, what I did is I measured out um, an, an equal amount of the aggregate. So this is a total of 1,793 grams of decomposed granite. And then this is the same. And then in these two containers, it's half of that. So that way I've got one, two, two and a half, three. And as I start to mix uh, the binder together, I'll be able to decide um, how much um, of the aggregate will work. Now my plan is to use this uh, cement coloring terracotta. Hopefully that works out okay. Um, to give the binder a little bit of a, of a brownish reddish tone. I think that that's more consistent with a decomposed granite than having it be just creamy. 
although I'm kind of debating because if it's creamy, it'll look a lot like um, the uh, clay minerals that have uh, been um, weathered out of decomposed granite. If you think about what decomposed granite is, it's going to be some, and we can maybe see this in here, uh, there will be some clay minerals still left. Um, I think those are going to be pretty fine. Those will include micas, feldspars, things like that. Um, then there's also going to be quartz um, and, uh, and other more resilient materials that are not weathered out. So it's not a, com a complete weathering. If you had complete weathering, all you'd have left would be more or less quartz because that's the most resilient in um, uh, surface temperatures and pressures, right? Uh, and alkalinity. So um, I'm debating. I may add the coloring and I may not, um, but uh, we'll see where where the winds take me at the time. So I'm going to pause the camera so that I can um, do some mixing. And what I will do is I will mix together these two components, the metacalin and the silicate mix. I'll mix those two together um, for about 10 minutes. Um, in this case, it, in the instructions, it calls for that part C. Well, the part C is, uh, is an additive. Uh, I figured out that that was pumice, um, or at least I assume it is based on what the packaging says. And the guidelines are basically uh, temperature based. So uh, if you have temperatures between 60 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit, so in other words, on the cooler side, you'll want to add 5% um, of the Part C enhancer. Uh, now, why do you want to do that? Well, because it's the colder temperatures will slow down the polymerization process. And because pumice is pozzolanic, naturally pozzolanic, naturally reactive to the silicates, it will um, uh, catalyze the process. It'll make the process go faster. So having it at a colder temperature, you want it to go a little bit faster. And that'll give you, uh, as it says here on, on the instructions, a pot time of you know longer. It'll be one hour. Um, and then if you want to um, shorten that even more, you can double the amount of the enhancer um, and it'll, uh, it'll shorten it again to 30 minutes. Um, if you don't add any enhancer, it'd be about three and a half hours. Uh, pot time is just the time it'll take for everything to harden up and, and, um, uh, and then everything's done, you set. <laughs> so as your temperatures get higher, you actually don't want to add any enhancer because you don't want it to go faster. Uh, you'll, in those cases, you will um, add um, a little bit of water. It calls for 0.5% of its 85 to 94 degrees Fahrenheit. And, um, and then they mentioned this part H enhancer, um, which I assume is a retarder uh, that will help if it's between 95 and 105 degrees. Um, I'm not sure what that retarder is, but um, probably couldn't, wouldn't be too hard to figure out. In my case, I'm in my lovely climate controlled shop that has a heat pump air conditioner running and set to 77 degrees. Um, so because it's 77 degrees, I don't need any enhancer unless I wanted to shorten the pot time, which I don't. I'd rather have more time to, you know, not panic <laughs> and work things out. Um, so I'm not adding any of the enhancer in this mix. Okay, I'm going to mix things up and then pour them in the mold.